Welcome to Texas Lone Wolf, your source for red pill, truth, nothing sugar-coated. Now, for this welcome to Sidetrack Saturday. What I may add, uh, I did a last segment of Sidetrack Saturday where... Men and women cheated on one another in different Reddit stories. This one here is based off of real life. This is based off of real life. And I'm going to alter the names listed below. And how karma... <clears throat> operate in mysterious ways. Alright. We're going to get started. Here's a picture I want to show you. Yeah, there's a man taking his wedding band off. Outside, out, intruders from the outside, I shall. We'll mention, oh, we'll talk about that too. Here in a little bit. The intruders often influence one spouse behind the other spouse's back. So, with that being said, you know, I have personally watched this when I was growing up. I said, why in the world would we have outsiders Influencing the parent's decision. For example, I give you an exa uh, For example, the outsiders would steal from two parents and try to nudge the mother into filing charges against her own son over. On trivial stuff. Bingo. The very same outsiders who tried to meddle into the marriage of two couples pulled several stunts. Again. Men have no friends, women have no friends, especially when the two couples are married. They have no friends. Treat your marriage like this. Draw your boundaries. Tell the intruders, tell the outsiders, tell people who don't who are not married to you to butt out. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, anyways, yes. In outsiders will influence your marriage. That will result in two couples arguing instead of uniting as one. So what is really sad is, you know who else is affected by this? The children of the couple. Do you see where I'm coming at? The children of the couple. Now, I'm not berating anyone. I'm not painting anyone in a dark color. You know what? If, they, if they're going to accuse me of that, then they already done it to themselves. Warning. Content may not be viewer, but viewer discretion is advised. <clears throat> viewer discretion advised. All right. 
Let's go ahead and get this up here to, um, let's get, let's get into this. And sometimes this can have a very detrimental cost. Such as that intruders, outsiders calling in the medical community in on the uh, spouse being manipulated or influenced. Okay, end of affection. Yeah, I've seen this up close between a man and a wife. End of affections. But, you know, extramarital relationships and don't really, okay, when others interfere, <coughs> excuse me, third party needs to not be a romantic partner. Yes, I said that. I stand behind that too. Third party needs to keep their noses out of the issues with the marriage. Anyone with malicious intents or does anything to break up a union can be held responsible, especially in a state that is called alienation of affection. Others can be sued, include family members, clergy, even therapists. It can be any individual that offered counseling advice and tends to convince a spouse to leave their partner. Did you get that? We need that here in the state of Texas. Elsewhere, we need it across the land. We need to be we need to be suing the um, outside party for interference. <clears throat> I'll guarantee you, if there's such thing as a heaven, according to the Bible, the third parties. Family members will not be invited into the wedding of the of the lamb. They will not be invited. All right, alienation of affection lawsuits. It's available in some states, and they're trying to throw that law, or they're trying to discard that law. That's a bad move. We need to wake that law up in all 50 states in the Union. Alienation of election lawsuit provide a way to hold them accountable. Talking about the outsiders and intruders, it's not always easy to prove these types of civil cases. The legal guidance recommended to prevent and denial. So, yeah. <clears throat> You need to understand that. All right, here's another one. This is updated February 2023. Why you shouldn't let outsiders affect your marriage. That's uh, letting somebody else come in behind one spouse's back to influence a decision. Being secretive, being, being, um, being able to coerce someone into doing something they don't want to do. Couples that are in their golden age are prone to being manipulated. Did you know that? <clears throat> now, okay, I'm going to follow my own, this year I'm going to follow these path to a deeper, meaningful relationship in life. Outsiders will be casted out of my uh, friendship if they try to influence me. Remember, folks, every pillow talks. Nobody's your friend. Your supposed closest friend or family member will likely share what you have told them in confidence 
to one they share with a babe with. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. That's that's very tough pill to swallow. And you're talking about embarrassment. <coughs> no. I won't let my partner take the piss from the outsiders. And this here is actually available to couples who need refreshing reinforcement and, of course, drawing their boundaries and telling the other person to butt out. And no, I'm not trying to be a simp. To, you know, if you want to get married for good intentions, this video is for you to help reinforce your marriage. <laughs> you got butterflies in your stomach when you first get married. You want to go check up on your partner right away, ask them what they're doing. But you got to give them space. Remember that. It's like you're smothering them. The other night I had to explain to my fiance that I felt... The wall closed in on me. I had this nurse coming, this nurse coming out, the other doctor coming. Then I had her, and it felt like I was being closed in. As an introvert, I don't like people closing in on me. Of course, I get a bad rap as being antisocial. You know, not wanting everybody all at once in my circle. I'm I'm actually selective social. I am a social, but I'm selective. So guess what? <clears throat> Especially something that involves them or could damage their union. Remember, every pillow talks. Every pillow talks. Every person tells secrets. That was shared in confidence. They tell secrets to other people. This is why a man doesn't have any friends. Woman doesn't have any friends. This best girl, best man, or best woman thing in a marriage and a wedding really don't mean crap. They just want to find your weakest spot, weakest time to sleep with your partner. And then, then boom. You're at the divorce court. You're at the family court for divorce and splitting up assets. Then regret soon will follow. You know, I've seen my own mother cry her eyes out on what she could have done on her side to protect her marriage. All right. Outsiders had influence. Intruders had influence. People can walk up to you, pretend to be your friend, that's where st stuff hits a fan and splatter and gets all over the place. And guess who's left cleaning up the mess? original marriage partners. Keep the intruders out. <clears throat> it's very important to do this for your sanct sanctity and all that. Also take note of this. Your opinions will shape your partner's image. So many people judge your spouse based on the picture you paint. Be careful. It will come back and bite you in the backside. If you're always complaining about neg speaking negatively, others will view, that, view them that way. You only will have yourself to blame.
when either party wants nothing to do with each other, private, personal, business, call that for a reason. For it remain be between the two, should stay between the two. I'll end by saying, mindful, airing your dirty laundry because someone else needs an invitation to clean up. No, no. Personally, as a black sheep of the family, I've been called worse names you can even imagine. But soon the tide will turn. <coughs> so, this is actually protecting the marriage from outside intruders. Whether it's the woman on the street or man on the street that simply can't keep his hands off of females while he's married to his wife, there's a problem with that. So, yes, you need to understand this, all right? Whoa, I blew it up too much. All right. Okay, uh, I'm gonna read this. Many married couples experience as a relationship changes over time. Yes, it does. During first years of the relationship, they spend many evenings talking with each other. Two, they want to share joys, hurts, and hearts. Then there's the closeness between them two that made them to get to know one another more and more. When both sure that they found out a soulmate they've been longing for, as the relationship progresses, constraint of every life, everyday life seems to take control of marriage. Children, career, friends, relatives, of church, all very good in themselves, but at the end, burden for the marriage. So my thing about this is, they can, you know, they have some nosy ass people that just. Stick their nose where it don't belong. You need to understand this. And this is partially the reason why we have a high divorce rate. Because people prodding their noses where it don't belong and shouldn't mind their own damn business. Suddenly, the couple realized their relationship revolved more around things and people than around each other. This is where two couples start to drift apart. They look at each other as damn strangers. The closest between two seem to have disappeared. Oops. Wow. All those spouses realize how much they suffer from that. Outside influence. You know, Intruders. Just because the woman on the other side of the street wants to come in and wants to play mama to your kids, she needs to take her damn ass back to her own house, manage her own damn grass. So, yeah, I'm going to be labeled some names. But you know what? They are what they call me. Capiche? They have no idea how to deal with the emptiness that crept into their marriage. Wow. That is very strong. Now, I'm fixing to go through some... Um, I'm fixing to go through some stuff for your own, own purpose here. The situation I described more common... We may wish to believe and cannot solve by putting the blame on other spouse. You put the blame on the intruders and tell them, get the hell out of my house, don't ever come back. And two partners should get back together and say, you know what, wow, close call. They're going to have to keep their stuff and block them on social media if you have to. Block them out of your life. You know, most couples 
don't want to do that. They want to they want to just walk on the eggshells and make sure their marriage is fragile. Quite often, both partners have the feeling they're the only ones who invest in the marriage, while the other one goes after his or her own interest. That can I can resonate with that. That's also not necessarily the case. Even both child spouses try to make the marriage work. They feel increasing, increasing distance between each other. Well, because of the intruders, because of the outsiders. Okay, let's just say that you took in some indigent, mentally challenged uh, human beings. Get paid a first and fifteenth, huh? Don't let that out of the bag. Outsiders will try to milk you for the last cash. And remember, when there's a funeral, true colors and true uh, ingrates will show up at the last minute. <clears throat> you can call others to come to the service. They won't show up. And be careful of those who hug you. That they could be fake. It just happened. We do not protect our marriage actively. We may believe as long as we don't break out of our marriage, nothing bad may enter it. Don't talk about the issues in the marriage to anybody. Nobody. It's not in their business. Let me tell you something. When a man and a man out in the jungle is a competition, when there's a woman and a woman out in the jungle, there's a competition. A man cannot be a man's friend, and a woman cannot be a woman's friend. Especially if they have negative spirits within them. All right? We believe as long as we don't break our marriage, nothing may enter it. Uh, That's not so, my friend. There are many new things in the world that can compete or enter it. For our love, and sometimes these force so strong, they they get between us and our mate to diminish our relationships. Here you go. I don't agree with the, all this whole list. Partial list right here is right here. Work, children, outside hobby, interests, sports, in law, friends, church. Yeah, that pretty much can cover it, I can say. Uh, Yeah, friends, in-laws, mainly, and church. Television, internet, computer games, shopping, illness, addiction, affairs. Those can alter a marriage from its former state to a stranger state. (coughs) So, yes. Now, most of, the, most of the stories written in the Bible is able to preserve marriage. But what's so sad is society don't even agree with the Bible no more. Society transgressed from society of the truth to society of the narrative that is the paid story by the uh, MSM and... What force may be around, okay? Both these are bad in themselves, can be destructive for a relationship. When it comes between a couple's love, precious temptation, (coughs) can't even genuinely good opportunity coming from the outside are limitless. They don't wait for invitation to intrude in our marriage. They show up by themselves. Does that sound familiar? 
like that nosy ass woman across the street. Just because you live out, they live out in the country, she moves out in the country too. She copycats you. She wants to copycat everything you do. Even if you put the name brand tampon inside yourself when you're on menstruation, she wants to buy the same thing. If you go out and put your own sibling down, the others will join in on that. So, guess what? You know, after watching my two parents, that outside influences influence their decision often behind the other's back. That's not cool. We have to teach limits to our children to learn to respect our need, spend time without them. We have to honor our parents while being able to say no to them. Who, whatever or whoever we're dealing with, we have to make clear that only one human being has top priority in our life. That's our spouse. That will be honored. The later we start that, the more difficult it would be. I don't think so. To be honest, I won't let nobody into my uh, marriage and try to give me two cents because they would be told to depart from me in a hurry. Listen, manipulators hate boundaries. Your supposed friends could be your worst enemy. <clears throat> Here's a scripture that comes to mind, Matt 19, verse 6. They are no longer two but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. That's pretty strong right there. You know what that means? And I also should have been reworded. Let no man or woman separate. But God's word said, let no man separate. Why was that scripture written? We must guard our marriage so outside world cannot separate it. Yes. <clears throat> Many run after the uh, celebrities like a two-dollar whore and worship their image. Let me tell you something, my friends. Let me tell you something, viewer, uh, YouTube viewers. I'm talking to you. If you go chasing after celebrities, you're chasing after something that can't fill your void. I recommend chasing after your marriage partner. And him, the other partner chasing after the said partner they that they married. Remember, when you chose to chase each other and start getting together, having a heart-to-heart -heart talk, laughing and cutting up, there's much happiness right there. But do so in secret so nobody sees this. Just remember, there's always... A competitor out there waiting to influence you into going against the marriage union. You see? <coughs> and we do not, okay, now, um, marriage is strong as we invest into it. In the previous chapter, we talked about values. We give only what we uh, highly value highly. All right? If we did not put a high value, it would make our marriage grow. The other and the other influences would take over. I said that right. If we invest in our marriage and spend time, effort, sacrifice, and protect the marriage from such influences, the uh, chances of eventually having a rock-solid marriage is, marriage is quite high. Okay, let me go ahead and share. Let me go ahead and read this scripture again. Matthew, Matthew 13, 45 to 46. 
Again, kingdom of heaven, heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. And he found one of great value. He went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Also take note, the grass is always greener on the other side. You need to make sure you tend to your own yard and keep the weeds, keep the high influences out of your yard. The merchants in the parable shows us what our attitude toward our relationship should be. It's a pearl that we treasure so highly that we forsake all others. As many wedding vows say, it's not easy. We pay a price to preserve it. But we know it's much worth more than that will be paid for it. Marriage is designed to be an exclusive club, two-person arrangement that provides a safe place for each other's soul. There is no place for third party to receive an um, equal share in the marriage. Yes, I said, that means in-laws, friends, mama this, daddy that. Do me a favor, quit calling them mama this, mama, daddy that. They ain't your mama, they ain't your daddy. They did not sire you in the, in the world. Their DNA doesn't belong to you. Period. Do me a favor, quit calling them mama, quit calling them daddy. They're not your DNA parents. Whether you grew up with them or not, take a second look at yourself. Take a second look at what happened to the marriage between the mama and uh, the other spouse. You ever watch a soap opera where influences were so strong they manipulated each other against each other, behind each other's back. Take a look at that. Do you want that to happen to you? Then go ahead and call the other person, Mama. Go ahead and call the other person Daddy. They're not your damn Daddy. They're not your damn Mama. They're not. I'm calling a spade a spade. You know, this video might piss some people off, but hey, this is the rawest red pill truth that could provide a solid foundation in a marriage that will strengthen it, not tear it down. All right? And actually, a marriage is designed to be one man, one woman club. Not exclusive club. Well, yeah, I guess so. Exclusive club, yeah. Uh, not inclusive, but exclusive. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Two-person arrangement, arrangement can provide a safe place for each spouse's soul. So, you you know, you got some people who will tell your business out to the other party. That needs to stop. You know what I mean? There's no space for third party to receive an equal share in a marriage. Because, look, look, look. Did you marry, man, did you marry a woman to be your lo lovely wedded wife? If you say yes, then you have a sole say in a marriage. Now to the wife, did you marry your husband to that you two both have a say in a marriage? You say yes, keep the third party out, including MSM. Include narratives from the uh, highest office in the land, including celebrity gossip. That has no damn place in your marriage. <clears throat> has no place. We pay a high price to preserve it, but we know as much more than that we pay for it. Remember that. And uh, um, this can disrupt the safety of the relationship. Yes. Third party present our love gets the with a third party present our love gets divided. Then 
If it stays divided for a long time, then divorce is imminent. Part of our heart is taken away from our spouse where it belongs. Then brought to an outsider source. Kick them to the curb, for instance. <clears throat> oh, wow, look at this, look at this. Why Myth tell her best friend how unhappy she is with her husband's behavior? But out of misunderstood submission? Don't let him know your feelings. Oh, wow. Husbands may be more vested in his parents than his wife. That can be detrimental. A spouse make her child a confident, become closer than to her mate. That's wrong. That there is wrong. Triangulation is painful and unjust because third party receive what's due to your spouse. Triangulation is also a sin, a wrongdoing, a transgression against the law and the Bible. Situations seldom arise out of bad intention, but nevertheless betray the trust between spouses. Fracture the union that God had intended to develop in the marriage. Triangulation is what it's called. Please don't repeat this. Because third party receive what's due to your spouse. Your spouse never hear from you what you are telling others about him or her. God hates the deception and indirectness of triangulation. Because it is honest and love builds marriage, not recommendation of the outsiders. <clears throat> so yes, gossip separate close friends. In the beginning, there nobody's your friend. Instead of speaking the truth and love, we all, we in all things grow up into him who is the head and was Christ. Of course, we need close friends when we confide and we confide in us. Let me tell you, that's triangulation in, in a nutshell. But if that drives us away from our spouse, we start really step over the line, that boundary, the line, the line. Then conversely, you find yourself in a situation where, where a friend confides in you, but not in her spouse. Be aware of the dangers in that situation. All right? In spite of your good intentions, willingness to help, you may actually drive the couple apart. If you don't insist that your friend talks to her spouse first, the spouse deserves to know what's going on. All right? <clears throat> Marriage love requires a great deal of safety and true intimacy to grow. It brings out the most vulnerable, fragile parts of our personality. The outsiders is what can cause us to go reprobate. Okay? You know, Genesis 2.19 says, A man needs a helper. Who's going to challenge that? It did not say that man needs an outsider as a confidant to discuss marriage problems. It is a nothing like that in the book of Genesis 2.19. Problem solved. Now, with a third party involved, there's not enough safety for these parts to emerge. A bond between two spouses cannot grow stronger. Say no to others, but people, with, whether to people, things, or tasks, it's not easy. Sometimes it's hard work because anxiety may upset others. If it does upset others that are outsiders, kick them out, draw a boundary, tell them, stop, don't cross. But you know what? They can get authorities in and turn around and come in between you and your spouse. 
that can happen. <clears throat> I'm not saying it won't, but it can happen. Listen, I'm not trying to be hard on you. But when you let outsiders in and they destroy the marriage, you know what they're going to do to you? They're going to milk you till you're broke. Then you're going to go back to your former spouse and ask, can you start all over? Because they took you for granted. This is very important to discuss. All right? Marriage involves more than keeping love between you and your spouse alive. It means forsaking and leaving behind other things. That's right. That includes intruders, outsiders, so-called best friends. Best friends can be your worst enemy. They'll stab you in the friggin' back. They'll smear your name in the mud. Don't trust them. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother to be united to his wife. They become one flesh. Genesis 2.24 It's not easy. Many newlyweds will, newlyweds will feel disheartened to find they have to say no to so many things to maintain their marriage. That's how you make a strong marriage right there. Before they get married, they could take care of career, friends, sports, trips, other activities. Now they're restricted by the marriage they most resent their, they almost resent their partners for this. Take it up to God, not your partner. It's not an extension of singleness where you take your spouse along. It takes time to build connection between two of you. <coughs> Sorry about that. Marriage means forsaking some freedom in order to gain growth. You can't have both at the same time. If you'll make forsaking a part of your life, you will always run danger of adding the wrong thing, bad influences to your marriage, subtracting the good closeness honestly from it. All intruder problems are ultimately caused by either two or of the either of the two or both. <coughs> So yes, you got to protect your marriage. Here is a marriage bond is one of many ways God provides for our needs. All right, not your outsider friends, not your confidant. All right. Not that workplace culture where people people will date on the job and then turn around and go live a double life. No, that can't provide for your needs. Again, that's triangulation. So... <clears throat> I'm glad to talk about this one controversial topic of the Saturday, Sidetrack Saturday. Either one feels drained or resentful of the other, and then guess what? It falls back down on your kids. They feel abandoned and unloved. So when you let outsider influence come in, all right, it affects your children. Kick the outsider out. Kick them out. I don't care if they look real nice to have around. Remember, a best friend is a gossiping person. Every pillow talks. Remember that. And... 
Anyways. Marriage does not have all the resources for that couple needs. You'll have to stop your spending money on unnecessary BS and put it back into the marriage. Ask your partner what can we get on this. No need to go out buy weed. No need to go out buy an unnecessary bull corn. Don't go out shopping for the latest fashion stuff, designer stuff. All you're doing is buying a name. You want a Gucci purse? You want a um, top dollar purse? You have to go go through purses like you go through your underwear? Really? That's consumerism. It also will damage marriage, too. Now, what promotes, what promotes intruders? Intruders do not show up expectantly. There are signs of some deep issues in marriage. They are the fruit, not the cause of the problem. Even affairs don't simply happen to a marriage that was healthy until the other showed up. Wow. Often, things for people intrude in our marriage when we experience some form of struggle in our marriage. We haven't been there the whole time. We are not. We are more willing to allow them to come in between us and the spouse. When a marriage contains conflict or hurt, we tend to busy ourselves with other people and activities. That, that is less painful. This is a sure way to go into divorce mode. All right? Unsolvable problem in home day after day. Problem doesn't go away. All right? And the other will come in and suck up the... Vampire energy in the marriage, thus leading it to early deletion. Then, the D-Day is imminent. And guess who makes the big bucks in this? Family court, the judge, the two lawyers, they make money off of it. And do you think they give a damn about you? Think again. They view marriage couples as a prey in the jungle to milk the dough out of you. Thus, landing the former spouse's own reality checks. And this, my friend, as the consequences of letting the other into the picture. They should be out of the picture. So yes, we're going to talk about natural consequences of intimacy. The nature of emotional intimacy can be one of the reasons for vulnerability to outside intruders. I overheard a married woman say she wouldn't mind going to cheat behind her husband's back getting a younger uh, person. Really. I heard that with my own two years. And this will drive a wedge between the marriage. And also, take note, Sometimes the wife will call the medical doctors or medical um, people in the medical field and lie on her own husband to put him on many drugs. This is the worst thing you can even do. You put him on drugs and it becomes docile. And his void is grow, growing, and guess what's filling it? The drugs. Outside influence become greater. I'm telling you. 
then the marriage is on a downward spiral. I'm going to tell you this one time. I watched two parents go through this. It will be my duty to defend my marriage. If I get married, it will be my duty to defend it. But other people, they believe in this blue pill, blue corn, saying that the matrix won't hurt it, society won't hurt it, bull corn. You know who gets most hit, hit on mostly? Do you want to know who get hits on emotionally? Or you know, you know who gets hit on the most, right? Take a wild guess. Outsiders. Once they see your marriage glowing, getting stronger, they go on a piece of that cake that you already had when you got married. You ever heard that term? Let them have the cake and eat it. Don't fall in that trap. Now, First John 4.18 says this. Fear, we mentioned off, is the opposite of love. There's no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fear is not made perfect for in love. Please don't fall into that society's delusion. Alright. And most people forget to They, 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 they forget to take these scriptures into, con into accountability. So, so yes, look at this. You made your want your spouse to be stronger than he really is. That's modern woman's thinking. This is modern woman's thinking. You may be disappointed as a perfection failing. Let me tell you what. You better embrace it. Not everybody is a perfect prince or princess from the Walt Disney bullshit movies that we grew up with. This little princess syndrome... Marriage will suffer. The D-Day. Then, you're lived with a catastrophic wound that only you could see. You need to get rid of the Disney movie because they promote Satanism, pedophilia, and all that junk. Walt Disney is not a... It's only a cartoon designed to drive marriages apart. Get it. You don't like it? All right, go your own way and find out what happens and then come back and tell me I'm right. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and take this off and I'm closing for Sidetrack Saturday. We almost hit an hour, so yes. Remember, uh, a marriage being defended is a couple's war, not a single spouse war. Remember that. Those who strive to the end the marriage will be saved. Now take care of yourself and remember the marriage couple matters. 
Hope you found this video very, very, very informative. Yeah, uh, what's more important, honoring your husband or honoring the uh, intruders? You want to walk around leading with feelings or looking at logic? Take your choice and make your choice now. And uh, furthermore, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't hit, forget to hit the bell for notification. And thank you for taking the time to watch Sidetrack Saturday for the building a stronger marriage on the 22nd of December, 23. And I want you to take care of yourself, take care of others including that these others are your children. I don't care about the outsiders or best friends. Beware of the snake that walks on two feet, speaking, oh, sweet talk, but have a hidden agenda. Kick them out of your life. All right, peace out.